This vulnerability is really rare nowadays, but with that in mind, it is still important for you to learn what command injection is. This vulnerability is caused by having your application run certain OS command. This means that whatever they are running also lets the user run those commands using the same permission of the application, which is usually trusted. Here are some of the useful commands that you can try to check out if you are looking for OS command injection. Now, first thing is the who am I? And this is the very first one that I try always just to have a feel of the roles and permission that I have. Now, one command that you should not slip on is this ps-ef or task list for Windows. It shows you all of the running processes and I have sold some CTF using this because you can see certain cron jobs running in the background and most of the times those have elevated permissions that will give you root level shells. This is an example of how you can expose OS command injections in your web application. And as you can see, this is where you use the parameters directly on whatever OS command that you are using in the background. And the main culprit on this is you not sanitizing the parameters before using it. Because if you are not trying to sanitize those stuff, you can see a simple escape character like an ampersand will result into executing a separate um, command in the OS, for example, here on Linux. And Let's try it out on the laboratory. Now on this lab, it will demonstrate a simple case of command injection. So um, there's a shell command in, in the back end that is being called for the product ID and the store ID. To solve this, we need to execute a who am I command to determine the current user. So now let's go to the actual lab. Okay, so here we need to check out some of the details of the items to see the... Okay, so this is the check stack. So when we click it, you can see there's a 62 units in here. What we're going to do is let's turn on our proxy so that it can be intercepted by Burp Suite. And let's just refresh it. Okay, then let's go advance, accept risk, and continue. Okay, now this means that if we go to our um, perp suite, as you can see, there is this product already there. Let's see the check stock, what type of command it can, um, it can be captured on the perp suite application. Okay, so there is this post command and as we can see, the product is, um, all the parameters are the product ID and the store ID. What we can do is, we can enter a escape command, which is the ampersand, which is percentage 26, percentage 26, um, URL encoded, oh. We need to send it to a repeater. Let's change this. Percentage 26. Who am I? Percentage 26. Okay, so let's try to send this and see what happens. And as you can see, in the background, the lab is solved and we have found the current user, which is Peter. OWAS has recommended a cheat sheet to prevent this, but the main important thing you need to know is never have your application execute any OS command. And if you cannot avoid this, be sure to sanitize it properly, 
never allow any escape characters like ampersand, pipes, or semicolons in the parameters. Now, this is a part of series discussing different server-side vulnerabilities, and I am currently using Web Security Academy and their laboratories for this demonstration. So please check out their website for this free security courses. And if you enjoyed this video, please check out my other videos here on Hakista TV. Till next time, my fellow Hakista.